I thought I'd like to do a little video on the tools I use, I use, and the walking, my ironwood walking cane. So, this right here is my ironwood walking cane. It's a very nice cane, very strong. This is the one that Brazos made that I was talking about in the other video. But it's a good cane. It's very strong. I used the same method as I did with the iron wood cane. It was a mortise tenon method. So that's my iron wood. I guess these are some of my tools that I use. First one being, it's a carpet knife. I use it to carve my maple with. It works excellent, you know. Maple bark is a pain to get off, but this carpet knife makes it really easy, so it doesn't cut into the wood, and it doesn't ruin it either. So, it's a trusty little tool. Right here's the Forstner bit. That's what I drill a hole with with the handle. This is a one inch. I have a seven eighths, but I usually use the one inch. Because I feel it's a more stronger, it makes it much stronger for the shaft. And it's very nice and very strong. I like Irwin. They make the best Forstner bits. This is a three eighths drill bit. I use this if I'm going to put in a 550 paracord lanyard, which is this one right here. This one is a 1 fourth. It's one I use for the tactical rope or just regular wrist strap. That's what I'll use if I have to use a, a wrist strap for a tactical rope. That's one you want. This is here is a drum sander. You can put it in a drill press or you can put it in a hand drill. I don't have a drill press, I have a hand drill. And this works good because I use it on my hickory. Because the hickory bark is so hard to get off. I mean, it's a pain in the neck to get off if you don't have a... Your palm sander ain't going to do nothing for the hickory bark. A lot of bark is like thick on the hickory, so you need a strong piece. Something strong like this will do it. It removes the bark pretty well. I mean, it makes it really easy to get all that other bark off. So those are my tools. This right here would be my shaft. And a cane handle which is right here and this is what it looks like when I first start off so like what you see on my website or whatever is a finished piece like uh, that but the finished piece would be The finished piece would be like this red alder all done connected and joined with epoxy or wood glue and that's what you would get but before it starts off it looks like this so that's what you get and that's the uh, cane handle you'll get this right here is a maple cane handle which I drilled a Forstner bit hole on the bottom side. Always drill it on the bottom side. Before I round these off too, you know. It's just right. You just gotta round them off. That way it protects the uh, the grain too. Yes, it has wax on it. 
unfortunately people in this town don't know that you're supposed to harvest your wood in the winter time. Uh, it's a strong handle though. Maple is really strong. And the shaft, you want a shaft from anywhere from 37 inches to 40 inches. And that's the rough cut compared to what would you get. Well, this is not maple, it's red alder, but compared to what you would get with this. As far as finishes go, I don't know. People like lacquer. I like lacquer. People like Verithane. That's fine too, but me, I like lacquer, Verithane. I like lacquer the best, though. It's easy to repair. So that's what I like. So that's what that looks like. That's the rough stuff compared to what you get with the finished stuff. There's another handle. And this is the rough stuff of the maple. As you can see, move that out of the way. But this is the rough stuff of the maple. That's the rough stuff. And yeah, uh, it's got that rich brown. All the knots get sawed off with the saw that I use. It's a kind of a different kind of saw that I use to when I go and harvest the wood, but it is a good saw that I use. And it uh, cleans out the ridges in the bark like so. You can't see them right now, but that's what you get. Those get cleaned off and they get all smoothed out. And I have to sand it and sand it and sand it and sand it. I'd have to start off with a uh, 60 grit to get off the uh, the limbs, then I go to 150 for a while, and then 220, then the last but not least 320. So I thought I'd like to show you some of my tools. Hope this helps you out a little bit. Keeps your wood working.